All right, let's talk some Big 12 betting lines. They're out, Ted. BetOnline.ag has put out their Big 12 win totals. I'll just go in alphabetical order. Baylor, eight and a half. Iowa State, six and a half. Kansas, two and a half. Kansas State, six and a half. Oklahoma, eight and a half. Oklahoma State, eight and a half. TCU, six and a half. Texas, eight and a half. Texas Tech, five and a half. And West Virginia, five and a half. Okay, when you see those, does does anything really jump out at you initially? Uh, yes. Oklahoma eight and a half is like candy from a baby, right? Am I am I missing something? I okay. So I saw this on Twitter initially, and I was like, "That's got to be a typo." No way, they've got OU at eight and a half. Like, do they just want to and? To, to betonline.ag's defense, the I, I believe the over is like minus 160, right? Yeah. So it's not uh, – I mean, the, the, they clearly – you know, the odds are, are, are pushed over there to the over, but to, for that to even be an option, I, I, I think it's best to start with this. Brent Venables did not take this job to go eight and four. No. If they go eight and four, he's going to kill someone. <laughs> like, so I, I saw that and I, I stay away and usually stay away from the college football betting. Man, I, I turned to my wife and I was like, hey, how much would you <laughs> be comfortable with me throwing on OU to win nine games? She was like, what? <laughs> so I just, I can't believe that's the number. Well, I can't believe it's the number whenever it's the same number as Oklahoma State and Texas. Texas is a five and seven football team from a year ago. Oh, and by the way, they play the best team in the country the second game of the season, and you've got them with the same win total over under as Oklahoma. I, you know, and I don't know there's a method to their madness and I don't know what it is. I don't know that many people do. I, it's. I, I I'm with you. Right. But just. I wonder if I they know, think that Oklahoma's in the sec already. A, a lot of, a lot of new faces, right? You get a new offensive system, new defensive system. We, we understand we have, we've talked about all of the change, right? But. OU still has better players than pretty much everyone in the conference. And, and when you look at, you know, that, that win total being eight and a half for the Sooners in the last 22 years, OU's only had eight wins, an eight win season three times. Three, yeah. Three times. You, uh, 2005, eight and four. 2014, eight and five. It's probably because a really good center graduated the year before and they just couldn't <laughs> handle the loss and then 2020 they were nine and two 2014 eight and five so is that yeah that's three times Two oh five, two thousand nine, 2009 and 2014 all eight win seasons yeah but that's three years out of 22 out of the last 22 seasons since 2000 yeah i mean so History and statistics are on your side if you're taking the over. Yes. And forget, uh, yeah, history and statistics definitely on your side. But so is all of the things that you need to forecast this team moving forward. I, I don't know what this team is going to be come November. They're going to be way better than they are when they start the year. I think this is – because of some new schemes and some new guys, I think it's going to take a while before they start playing their best football. They're not going to look like a, a, a semifinal type of team probably in the first three, four weeks. But I think they'll round into that. And I think this team, it, if, if things come together like I expect, I think they've got a chance to, to be a one-loss Big 12 champion and make a semifinal. You don't say that about a team that you've got an eight and a half win total on. 
no, I, I I'm with you. And you look at some of these other ones, like a Oklahoma state at eight and a half. You look at their non-conference central Michigan, Arizona state, and then they get Arkansas pine bluff. So two and one, maybe in the non-con, maybe one and two, if things go really poorly, three, and know, oh, should be three and oh, should be three and oh, right. Should be a so, three and oh football and, team before they these, even get started. Yeah, and these win totals are all regular season win totals. So I I I think that Oklahoma State line is really interesting because basically it says, hey, do you think that they will win six Big 12 games? Do you think they'll go six and three in the Big 12? I I don't know, man. I mean, they lost so much on that defense and you know, we, you you think about the different style they're going to have to play. We assume, and you know, the more that it's going to put on Spencer Sanders to play well, I, I don't know. But one that one that's really interesting is Kansas two and a half, right? Because in the non-con they've got Tennessee Tech, Houston, and Duke. Not easy for them. I am assuming they're going to roll Tennessee Tech. I think they can beat Duke. Now, I'm not going to put any of my own money on Kansas football. I just that I have a strict policy not to do that. But it could be as simple as do you think Lance Leipold can get that team to win a Big 12 game? Here's the thing you got to fact Tennessee Tech, you give them the win. Texas, you give them the win. Duke, can they? The 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 swing game is Duke. Can they beat Duke? Oh, Texas, you give them the win. <laughs> That's awesome. I that one's interesting. Iowa State. I I know that they were one of the most disappointing teams in the country last year. They were the most disappointing team in the country for me in all of college football last season. I agree. And. I think when you look at that win total of six and a half, I just, I, I choose to believe that Matt Campbell is going to have that team win seven games. I know that they lost Purdy and Brees Hall and all those guys off that defense. I understand that, but I think if I had to choose, I'd take the over. Like I think that Iowa state will be a seven win football team. I'd be surprised if they were a six and six football team, you know? And I know that that may sound silly after what happened last year, but it's more of a, I think Matt Campbell's a really good coach. I think that program will be in a more familiar spot heading into the season. They'll feel better. They won't feel the pressure. Yeah. I still don't think they're going to beat Iowa, right? Cause they're at, they're at Iowa, but they've also got like Southeast Missouri and Ohio in their non-conference. So that's two wins there. And it basically comes down to, you think you'll, they'll go five and four in big 12 play. And I think that Matt Campbell's a really, really good football coach. So I, I think I'd be comfortable taking the over on Iowa State there. They've done a really good job developing their players. And I think the, the point that you made is, is really critical. They're back where they feel comfortable, right, with no one giving them a lot of attention, um, kind of dismissing them a little bit, not spending the entire off season dedicated to figuring out what the hell it is that Iowa state's doing so well. So yeah, I, I think that I think they're in a going to be in a pretty good position. And I think Matt Campbell, he's, he's going to be hungry because he's had those big jobs just like on the tip of his fingers. And you know, you may have missed that opportunity if if you do have a six and six season. Like you're gonna be shuffled to the back of the deck as far as the hot coach to hire at, you know, he'll still be his name's still gonna be thrown around for jobs, but stuff like Michigan and USC, like those are gonna be a lot harder to to acquire if you're coming off of a six and six season. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you. And that's I'm not exactly a Hunter Decker's believer. I guess that's who their quarterback is going to be, that big lefty. But I, they will be, I, they will be more comfortable. Uh, one other one, TCU, right? And, and I think that I, I get this sense that 
some TCU fans are just like, oh, Sonny Dykes is he, he's coming to save everything, right? He, he's going to fix it. Gary Patterson, he was too old. He'd been there too long. Sonny's going to come in and fix it. Man, you look at the last three years for TCU, five and seven, six and four, five and seven. And their win total six and a half. And they've got Colorado and SMU in the non-conference. I... I, I can't take them to win seven games. It, it's not like Gary Patterson left him, left Sonny Dykes, like some uber talented roster. I, I don't, I mean, it's been a rough go of it for TCU and it's been a rough go of it on defense yeah. as well. So maybe you're, you're hoping that Sonny Dykes and that staff really get things rolling offensively, but. I don't know, man. Picking them to win seven games, that would, I'll say this, that would be a hell of a year one for Sonny Dykes in Fort Worth. And they lost some big transfers. They lost their one of their best defensive players. Um, running back, obviously, one of the best running backs. They lost in the their best players. Yeah. Their most talented and players. Did they, is the, is the receiver still there? Quentin did, Johnson is still there. He's going to have a huge year. Because they are going to throw the football a ton, and they're going to they're going to isolate him and and put him to work. Now that doesn't mean it's going to equal a bunch of wins, but I bet he has a a blowout season as far as statistics. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Any any other of these win totals you want to talk about? Uh, I think we hit them all. I'm telling you, man. Baylor's the team that I'm nervous about. I think Baylor's going to have a squad. They, they're going to have a squad. I, and the reason you, you look at their non-conference, they've got Albany. They got to go to BYU, which is not going to be easy, but they got Texas state. Baylor has done a very good job recently of scheduling a, an, an advantageous non-conference slate. Savvy, savvy. It's like the K state of old. Yes. So uh, two and one at the very least for, for the Baylor bears. So basically comes that, Hey, do you think they're going to win seven games in the non-conference? I, I think they'll curb stomp BYU personally. I, and I think I, they're going to be tougher, more developed, more physical than pretty much anyone else in the big 12 except for Oklahoma, if we come around like I think we're going to. That that game is going to be a bloodbath. Yeah, people, if people are like, wait, you're that high on Baylor? They lost all those guys. Go watch the fourth quarter of the OU Baylor game last year. One team punished yeah. the other. And, they, you know, we haven't beat them every year, but we've walked away from that game saying, oh, my God, that is a physical-ass football team. And that, that is not going to change. And I know they've lost guys, but they've, they've constantly lost guys, and they've done one hell of a job developing. Yeah, and I'm also – I'm a big believer in the systems yeah. there at Baylor. Both of them, yep. Yeah. Really good. What, what Aranda's running defensively, and, and I know they, they lost Petrie and Bernard and JT Woods, but that entire defensive line – is back and I Jeff Grimes maybe runs my favorite offensive scheme in all of college football. So I'm well, a, I'm a believer. The scheme and, is good enough to take a backup linebacker and turn him into the leading rusher in the big 12. That's a great way of putting it. I don't think we need to say anything <laughs> uh, other than that about it. Okay. Let's get to call your shot. And we asked you guys looking at OU's win total, right? The bet online's got eight and a half. You taking the over, you taking the under why? I love this first one from Blake Biggs on Twitter. He says, over, it's Oklahoma in the Big 12. <laughs> that's, that's kind of the point, right, is, yeah, they've lost some talent. Yeah, they lost their coach from a year ago, but they're still running out of the tunnel with the more talented team, usually by far. And that is very, very important when it comes to winning football games. Very very important indeed. Uh, this other one comes from Jarek Savage, who says, over for sure, just the change in the program that we have already seen. I would be shocked 
if we didn't get 10 wins this upcoming season. I honestly don't believe BV would allow it. Boomer. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the thing is we're taking mainly the same group of guys and hammering home discipline, strength and conditioning, and it's not Lincoln Riley's offensive system, but you've got two proven systems offensively and defensively that have been as good as anyone in the country. So I, the formula, although different, is still there. And frankly, I think the formula is better. Yeah. And this last one comes from Chris Peterson, who says, over Rover. <laughs> Wait, is that a saving? Is that a saying? Uh, I, I don't think so, but nice, Chris. Sounds like something Chris Peterson, the coach, would say. Yeah. Over Rover. Just don't see more than three losses on the schedule. Only way it's four is DG is out at critical times. Back in the day, I stayed away from betting Sooner games because of bias. This one would be hard to stay away from. I agree, Chris. I definitely That is agree. the caveat, though, right? Yeah. Right. If, if Dylan Gabriel goes down, now, not to put any limits on the development of Nick Evers, the development of Davis Bevel, the development of General Boutte. But yeah, that'd be that'd be real bad. Real bad for Oklahoma. Well, I know Lebby Lebby really likes uh General Booty. It's still so weird to say. Likes him a lot. And he's one of the probably the most underrated uh kids in the country. Played at dip four different high schools, kind of during the COVID deal, went under the radar. Um and you know, just has a fanta- has the pedigree and has a fantastic set of skills. So he, I think he could be a solid player. Now he's, he's not, I don't think he's going to be the starter over Dylan Gabriel by any means. I'm not saying that, but I think you've got a really skilled player there and, and obviously Bevel uh, pretty good as well, which frankly, if our running game is what we hope it's going to be, that may not be, it may not matter. Now, you may not make a semifinal, but if you run the ball like we expect to, then you still should be a 10-win football team. Yeah, and you also got to factor schedule in this, right? Yeah. And that's yeah, that game at Nebraska, not going to be easy. It's not as good. It is not going to be as easy as some people think it's going to be. And then you get K-State at home. You get Baylor at home. You get Oklahoma State at home. And now you got to go to Ames and that is, that is what it is. But the schedule is also, I mean, don't have to sugarcoat it. It's, it's an easy schedule, all things considered. Yeah. Well, in, in the games that we were typically worried about a less talented team, why were we worried about it? Out physicaling us and out detailing us. Everything Venables does is built on details and physicality. So you hope that you're not walking into those games, not knowing what you're going to expect. You feel like you're going to have a, you're going to start the game with a detailed physical squad. And some things may have to happen after that, but those two things are first and foremost that you should be able to take care of if that's what you're preaching. Yep. No doubt about it.